presentation, first I will give an introduction, then introduce our methods, and report the results of, of our experiments, and finally give a conclusion. Well, machine learning is quite popular nowadays, and the problem for it is that it's hungry for data. In most of situations, we will find that unlabeled data is abundant and easy to obtain, but labeled data is difficult, time-consuming, and expensive to get. So active learning can address this issue by actively select a subset of the unlabeled data pool. So you don't have to label for all the unlabeled data, only select the most informative unlabeled samples, and so it can save the uh, time and the cost. Uh, active learning process is uh, shown as a graph here, and you have a small labeled data set, a large and a large unlabeled data set. Every time you query label from a feature for a chosen instance, and add the instance and the label query to the label set. Then using the updated label set to retrain your objective classifier. And the most important step in the active learning is uh, instance selection. So we put one of the most popular uh, approach, which is uh, uncertainty sampling here, as a method. Uh, the it uses the entropy of the instance to represent the informativeness. In our work, uh, we study on the heterogeneous human teachers. For example, uh, if we have a medical image, which is a cancer cell, uh, cancer cell image, and we want to ask for labels for the image, who will we consider uh, the senior doctor or the freshman in the medical school? I think most of them will choose the same doctor because he is the more uh, expert and we can expect the more accurate annotations from the expert uh, doctor. So it's quite similar to the situation of the crowdsourcing uh, where we want to obtain labels uh, from uh, human teachers. So we always have the uh, teachers with diverse backgrounds and they have uh, different expertise. So. If we could pick up the right teacher and matching their expertise with a given task, then it will save cost and get more efficient and accurate labeling. So I will introduce um, some of the modern active learning methods here. The first one is the cost-effective active learning. It's uh, do a joint selection on both the instance and the, the teachers for the process and integrate it with the proxy cost. The second is uh, learning active learning. They learn a regressor on the properties of the objective learner and the features of the data points and mapping the uh, learn to the error reduction of your objective classifier. So uh, they are using the learner forest and the Gaussian process for learning the regressor to pick up the best uh, active learning selection strategy. Incremental relabeling is a relabel strategy, so it will pick up the most uncertain and inconsistent instance to ask an expert to do a relabeling. The last one is a, select, a selective sampling. Selective sampling is different from the uh, strategy used in the above three methods. The above three are pool based uh, samplings, so you will have a, a, a number of unlabeled data set, and you need to pick up the most informative one. and uh, Last one is using a stream-based sampling, so you only have one unlabeled data at a time. You only design to curate or discard it. So this set a threshold to choose a set of the most confident teachers uh, to give up the labeling. So we base our work on the first one here, the CEAL, because it's considered uh, selected from the instance uh, and multiple teachers and also incorporated with the cost. So this is the process for the uh, original CEAO. And the problem here is that we are using the high dimensional data like images, soundtracks, and videos for the, our data now. In the original CEAO, in, in the in their SD computation stage, they use a tailor on row input data. So it may not have a very good result when it comes to the high dimensional data. So we explored with some different methods here in this part.
So you can see from here we replace the transverse for the computation of the expertise with the different strategies uh, used here. Uh, and we consider unsupervised approaches to learning the cluster information underlying the unlabeled data and hope it will choose a better teacher for us. So the key idea of our strategy is to leverage unsupervised learning to obtain low-dimensional representation of the original high-dimensional input data because it is easier to determine the teacher, the teacher expertise in a lower dimensional space. So, hope I didn't block it. So we try the GMN VA and the combined two combined method called a VA GMN and GMN VA. We will introduce it for you. The GMN assume data point for the major Gaussian distribution and assign the query data to the component yielding the highest. Poster, uh, posterior probability. A VA is composed with a, a from uh, from an encoder and a decoder. And from its encoder, it will uh, it will uh, it will render a lower dimensional Latin representation Z for the original high dimensional input data X. So we will utilize the Z here as a representation for the original data. Uh, VA GMN is a combined method. It's quite straightforward. So first you train the G VA and get the Latin representations, then train a GMN to do a clustering on the VA outputs. Uh, the GMV is proposed uh, uh, in the citation here, and it's uh, compared to the original VAE. It uh, replaces the Z2 sample from a uh, a Gaussian mixture model instead of uh, uh, only one Gaussian distribu distribution. So by it, it introduces the clustering information to the original VAE. So you, uh, we show the effectiveness of the GMVAE in a TSNE visualization here. And you can see the, the left, of, uh, left of graph is the original data, and the right is the GMVAE. Uh, it can capture some of the cluster information uh, from the original data. So for the teacher expertise learning, which we, uh, we tried the three strategies. The first one is the Kian Anjou input data using the uh, original method in the CEL. And the second one is Kian on the Latin representation, which the, uh, here we use the uh, we output uh, representation for the original data. The third one is the using the GMA clustering information. Uh, both of them uh, are using the similarity, uh, like choosing the most similar instance from the uh, label set used for the expertise training. It's a image represent here, and uh, it takes the accurate uh, average accuracy, labeling accuracy for the teacher to represent the teacher's expertise. Um, so how, how do you know the true labels for computing this? The, uh, the we integer? have a, we have for for this one. There is a this a label data set, small label data set here, and we have the true labels and the labels from the a label from all teachers to calculate the expertise. So that's before your active learning. Uh yes. Now when we uh, perform the methods, we find a problem here. Uh, this is the result uh, on the fashion analysis. And we found that uh, the random selection will uh, surpass all other active methods, which is not in our expectation. The graph here, the x-axis is the total cost, and the y-axis is the test accuracy. And the green, green line here represents for the random selection and the other colorful line are the active learning methods. And there is a, on the top, a dot black line, and the horizontal line is represented for uh, using the two, all true labels from for the unlabeled data set. So, so we look back uh, to the equation function for the joint selection CEL. It choose the instance and teacher from a product of the expertise and the uncertainty and divide the product by the cost of the teachers. So, 
So we look into one example saying that it, you will see although the first instance have a higher uncertainty, but because it has a lower expected, so it will get a lower final score. So uh, given the active learner, it will choose the second one other than the first one. But the, the instance with a higher uncertainty will contribute more to the test accuracy improvement. So it also happens if you have a lower cost for a less uncertain uh, instance. So to, to solve this problem, so we also try one more strategy is called two-step selection. So we detect, uh, we did uh, separate the two parts of the instance selection and the teacher selection. And first uh, select the instance, and then select the teacher given the instance. So the process here is changed to children they in this graph here. And uh, this, uh, the, the graph below is a result of uh, after finding the two-step selection. Uh, comparing to the original uh, CEO using the joint, joint selection, all the active uh, methods can have an improve on this strategy and uh, they also pass the random selection then. So we do two experiments on two different data sets. One is the fashion methods, another is the North American birth data set and explore with five different approaches. Uh, VA and uh, sorry, the GMN and VA GMN using the cluster predictions as a parameter for the teacher computation. And this formula you have seen before. Uh, the VA and GM we use using the uh, encoder outputs, and the CEO refer to the original CEO, which use KNN on the raw input data. And we also compare it to two more. Uh, Benchmark methods. The first one is random selection. It will select the instance and the teachers randomly. Another is benchmark using all two labels for the unlabeled data set. So we perform the 10 class classification task on the fashion methods, and we use the simulated teachers in this task. We, we trained five classifiers as five teachers, and for each classifier, we train it on two public samples uniformly retrieved from all 10 classes, uh, plus 300 expertise samples only uh, from the two specific classes only for this classifier. And the trained uh, test accuracy is reported here, uh, 0.98 for on the expertise classes and 0.65 on the overall 10 classes. So the process in the experiment uh, for the experiment is like we first feed the objective classifier with a fixed number of training data. Then we active select 100 samples and current labels from the teacher chosen. And we repeat the whole process um, for 50 times and the result from the average test accuracy. So this is the result on the fashion analysis. And uh, the, uh, the graph is uh, the same as the first we choose the x axis is the total cost spend and the uh, y axis is the test accuracy achieved amount. The uh, black dot line is for the benchmark using all the two, two levels and the gray line is the, for the random selection. The green one is the uh, original CEA. Uh, so uh, let's look into the first graph here. The first graph here we can see the methods for using the active learning with unsupervised learning actually perform very similar to each other. So maybe in the first graph, the GMN surpassed uh, other, other three methods, but this advantage is not very evident. And uh, the, uh, the performance of all methods will, uh, will entangle together when we imagine the uh, initial training size. When the training size is uh, is uh, near uh, is getting closer to the uh, uh, curate instance, the number of curate instance, which is 100 here, the boost the test, test accuracy boost for the extra learning actually becoming smaller, as you can see, uh, see in from the last graph here. So now we move to a human experiment. Uh, we perform a 10 class classification using a subset from the North American first data set. This graph shows an overview of the first data set. So 
uh, we built up an online learning system and kept labels from 15 human teachers with the expertise training on them. The online system built uh, is shared in this graph. So first we will give them instructions and after their uh, concerns, then we train them with handmade images, which is shown the upper graph here from the two board classes and the, the two board class is uh, different for uh, everyone and after the training we will ask them to indicate the category for 100 bird images from all 10 classes so the bird classification task itself is a very complicated task when we first uh, try to uh, perform the classification on it the the, the final test accuracy we can get is only about a 0.1 so we can hardly uh, continue with it so we do a feature extraction 0.1% or 10% uh, oh. yeah. only 10 bird classes so <laughs> it's like yeah. a random I think <laughs> it's less than random <laughs> 10% yeah, so, uh, so we perform you, the so you do the classification based on their provided model their pre-trained model or did you no, train it no, again? no not only on their uh, similar methods to them but not on their training model so you wrote the network and train it uh yeah the network is only for feature extraction so mm. this is the uh, <coughs> so it's like uh, this using the five the uh, Five convolution layer here is the uh, train the weights, mm -hmm. and the last of three we train the on a subset on the first set. The portraying is on the from the image net, the train weights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So then we will extract the features from the output of the fully the six fully connect layer, and use it as in input data for the following classification task. Uh, to clarify the for. Bird data set here used for the last three layers uh, uh, retraining is a, a separate uh, data set using for the classification type so they do not have overlap on the classes so this is a result on the uh, bird data sets so it's still comparing to the original joint selection of the CEL and GMV GMV and uh, we is actually uh, good over uh, have a good performance over road methods and they are slightly better than the random selection and the C original CEO still the worst but there is no clear difference about uh, or we can see that which unsupervised method is better in this case and the uh, fourth uh, subgraph here using the different initial training set size. Uh, 10, 20, 50, and uh, 80. And you can see the uh, similar situation here when it's measured to 80, the test accuracy boost actually disappeared. So we do an analysis on the GMVE because it has a overall good performance on, uh, on the bird data sets. And we want to say, uh, we want to see that it because it can cluster, uh, capture the cluster information underlying the unlabeled data set. So we did uh, perform the TSNE visualization here. The first is on the original uh, data, and uh, the right upper one is on the CL fine tuned data. And this one is using the VE outputs, and the final is the GMVE. You can see from the CL fine tuned, it already have some uh, cluster rings in the data. And the GOV can actually uh, catch it a little bit better. So finally, uh, we give our conclusion. So in this work, we do experimentally with heterogeneous teachers and explore the performance of unsupervised methods on high-dimensional data. So we based on CEL and explore with different uh, approaches to combine with the unsupervised methods here. And the, our methods can uh, surpass the original CEL on those two experiments we do. So we propose the algorithm combining our supervised methods with the uh, CEL and build up an online system, collecting human teacher labels, 
on an image classification task and contributed the data set of human, uh, human teacher labelings on the bird image classification task. So these are some feature works we want to explore. Yeah, we want to explore. The first, uh, the first one is a problem for our methods because we use a, a GMA here and we need to indicate the cake, which is a number of clusters in our experiment, which is 10 classes. We perform 10, two 10 class, uh, classification tasks. Uh, and some, uh, some study uh, claim that if we exploit the directly process, we can learn the number of clusters uh, automatically. Uh, the second one is about uh, teacher expertise. And the teacher expertise are actually not stationary along the labeling process. But some study claims that teachers are learning along the labeling uh, task. If they finish some labeling task, they can actually perform better in the following task. So uh, we, maybe we can learn a sequential model on the teacher expertise and uh, hope it, it may have a, uh, some effect to learn the better to uh, to get the their expertise. The last point here is to incorporate active learning with deep learning. It remains a challenge, uh, challenge here because uh, active learning, like what we do in our experiments, it only sample uh, one instance at a time. So, and we want, uh, we need to retrain the model every time after your sampling. So it will first we, uh, will uh, cost a, a new a lot of computation and uh, also cost the time and also the updated label set is not su in sufficient for um, deep method deep model training some study uh, in this one we study on the deep in uh, in a CN on image classification with active learning so they address uh, this issue by combining the uh, benchmark method instance select by the active learning and with a set of predicted by the Previous trained CNN model and to uh, compose the larger data, uh, data set and to retrain their CNN model. So, uh, but their performance is not that well. <laughs> so, we want to explore more on this. So, that's the demo, the end of my presentation. So, this graph shows the process we used in the experiment. So, if you have some questions. Who are the 15 teachers? Who, uh, there are students in NS, uh, they are not the uh, not experts on the bird images. So, so how do you, how do you select them? them? I, uh, actually, it's randomly select. So okay. they both don't have a background knowledge on the bird image. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, uh, I asked some of my friends to do the labeling actually. Okay, okay. The graph right on the teacher expertise, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe that will help to Oh, okay. Mm. I, can I just show you like this? So this is the static result for the 15 teachers we collect. So some of, the, of them performed very good on the on our training and uh, you can see the one the one fifth and the fourteen have a very high the expertise score is shown as the orange orange bar here. They have a very uh, high ex, uh, expertise score and uh, some of them will perform also good on the overall ten classes images. So, but there is one 